Good evening, everyone. You know what I'm missing that you guys all have, as I noticed when I came in, is a glass of wine. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? Finally, we have wine in TIFF Bell Lightbox. So uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Pierce Handling, Director and CEO of TIFF. Welcome to the kickoff of the 14th Annual Canada's Top 10 Film Festival. Tonight, we celebrate our nation's achievements in cinema. Filmmaking in Canada has never been more exciting. Artists are taking risks and having fun. Filmmakers are telling stories that shock us, touch us, make us laugh, and hold up a mirror to life in Canada. The Canadian experience is really a unique one, and our film industry is both a product and a reflection of that diversity. And as a nation, it's important that we take the time to celebrate Canadian films, and that we do it together. We love kicking off the new year with Canada's Top 10 Film Festival, and looking out at so many familiar faces tonight, I know that you do as well. So we'll see you all in the new year at the screenings. Now, there's a team that's been working tirelessly to bring Canada's Top 10 Film Festival together. Every year, they dream up greater ways to spotlight Canadian film. A very special thank you goes to Cameron Bailey, Steve Gravesock, Kerry Craddock, Agata Smolich del Sorbo, Magali Simon, Alex Rogalski, Christoph Straub, Lisa Goldberg, and Paul Krumholtz for your dedication to championing our nation's cinema. So sit back, enjoy yourself this evening, and I will turn things over to Steve Gravestock, Senior Programmer for TIFF. Thanks, Pierce. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening and showing your support for free poutine, booze, and Canadian film. Uh, it's a very exciting year for Canada's Top 10. Uh, in addition to the awesome lineup of films, we'll be announcing some great programming, including special events and onstage conversations. And I hope you really like the uh, way Janessa Dortona and her staff turned this into the slickest nightclub on King Street. Um, we're proud to announce that for the first time in its history, the festival includes the Top 10 Student Films of the Year. These films are bold and exciting. Keep an eye on these filmmakers as well. We'll be, we'll be hearing much more about them in years to come. A number of the most talented and promising young filmmakers first premiered in TIFF's uh, student film showcase, as it was known. Among them, Stephen Dunn, Hugh Gibson, and Kazik Radwanski. At the screening in January, awards will be given to the best live action and best animated student films. Special thanks to William F. White International, Technicolor, and the Directors Guild of Canada for generously providing the prizing for these awards. 2014 is also the inaugural year for the Canada's Top 10 People's Choice Award. Audiences will have the opportunity to vote for their favorite featured film in the lineup and will reveal the winner following the screening in January. Before we get to the films, we have many people and organizations we'd like to thank for their commitment to TIFF and to Canadian cinema. We couldn't do what we do year-round without the support of the following organizations. Our lead sponsor, Bell. Our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa. Our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, and the City of Toronto. And our Canada's top 10 festival partners, the Directors Guild of Canada and media partner Now Magazine. We'd also like to extend a very sincere thank you to Canadian distributors for their role in making the Canada's top 10 film festival possible every year. The Canada's top 10 shorts and features were crowned best in the nation by two independent panels of filmmakers, journalists, and industry professionals. The features panel was composed of Jason Anderson, Jason Gorber, Joey Klein, Brenda Longfellow, Matt McKinnon, Terry Miles, and Chloe Robichaux. The shorts panel was comprised of Nobu Edelman, Dave Barber, Sonia DiRienzo, Elena Bear, and Karen Walton. Big thanks to them for all their efforts. <laughs> Our student films were selected and programmed by TIFF's own Magali Samard and Alex Rogalski. Uh, please join me in thanking our panelists and programmers, several of whom, with, uh, many of whom are with us here tonight. One more time. <laughs> Canada's Top Ten Fist Film Festival will kick off on January 2nd, so please, please pace yourself on New Year's Eve. Uh, for those of you watching this announcement online, fear not. The festival may be traveling to your town. This year's Canada's Top Ten will be making stops in Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Montreal, and Vancouver. Now I'd like to turn things over to our host for this evening, who, reveal, who will reveal this year's top 10 films. Terry Hart is one of Canada's most beloved personalities. Uh, 
She appeals to audiences of all ages, I know, because my eight-year-old son, Graham, uh, told me that one of his dreams that one year, one, one day I would be interviewed on TV by Terry Hart <laughs> on his favorite channel. So. Um, Terry was the face of the movie network and has contributed to numerous radio programs, sharing her take and her love of pop culture. Terry is a true champion of Canadian film, and we're very lucky to have her with us tonight. Please join me in welcoming the one and only Terry Hart. Hi. Well, I am thrilled to be here tonight for a whole bunch of reasons, not the least of which is that this is my favorite event of the year. Um, we're incredibly excited to unveil Canada's top 10 film festival selections for 2014. As Steve said, this is the first year that we have 10 student films of the year. So let's start with those listed alphabetically. Candy Fox's Backroads. Alexander Mainwaring's Dinner Time. Accreta Sames, Elpis. Brianna Cheeks, Fallow. Aristophana Sulikias' Last Dance on the Main. Joel Salase's Lifers. Yasmina Karaj's Light. Colin Lepper's Never Stop Cycling. Grayson Moore's Running Season. And Pui Kawong's To Monster. And there you have it, your top 10 for the first time, Student Films of the Year. Congratulations to all the filmmakers. Here with us tonight, we have Akreta Same and Grayson Moore. Welcome to them and congratulations. A great list. Um, and now here are your Canada's top 10 short films of the year, once again, listed alphabetically. A woman looks back on the relationship between her mother and father in El Maya Tailfeather's beautiful and poignant documentary, Beatos, Rebel. A guy's weekend at a ranch leads to an unwelcome discovery in Kevin Funk's Bison. Jean-Vierre de Lude du Sel presents a poetic exploration of family and isolation in La Coupe, The Cut. <laughs> Upon cutting himself, a handyman is confronted with a momentous life change in Kazik Radwanski's Cutaway. <laughs> Saul Friedman presents the story of Noah's Ark from the animal's perspective in the darkly comic Day 40. A hunter in the Arctic tries to live by the traditional skills his grandfather taught him in Scott Brockemeyer's Kajutejuk, The Spirit That Comes. <laughs> the story of Second World War hero Andrew Minarski is told in Matthew Rankin's explosive, expressionistic, and psychedelic Minarski Shoot Mortel. Minarski, Death Plummet. One summer on Lake Superior, a trio of risk takers and a pretty young woman converge in Andrew Cividino's Sleeping Giant. A young couple takes a walk through a wintry forest in Slater Jewel, Slater Jewel Kemker's psychological thriller with a sci-fi twist, still. And finally, Randall Okita's The Weatherman and the Shadow Boxer bends the boundaries of cinema with spellbinding visuals in the tale of two brothers with conflicting memories. The Weatherman and the Shadow Boxer won the Vimeo Award for Best Canadian Short Film at the 2014 Toronto International Film Festival. And there you have it, the list, 2014 Top 10 Short Films. Congratulations to all the filmmakers. We are thrilled that we do have quite a collection of them here with us tonight. Please help me in welcoming Randall Okita, Saul Friedman, Kazik Radwanski, Andrew Cividino, Sarah Clifford Rashot, Evan Morgan, Dan Montgomery, Caitlin McIntosh, James Vandewater, Mark Swanker, Aaron Yeager, Karen Harnish, Dennis Goulet, Courtney Bainbridge, and Nyla Inuksuk. Welcome to all of you and congratulations. A great collection. Um, and now, ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Canada's top 10 feature films of 2014. 
A teenager in 1960s Quebec evolves from pro-independence activist to terrorist in Corbeau, Mathieu Denise's gripping chronicle of the development of the FLQ. Here with us tonight is director Mathieu Denis, De Mathieu Denis and actor Tony Nardi. A young woman from Montreal's Orthodox Jewish community finds freedom from the strictures of her faith through her relationship with a troubled man in Maxime Giroux's Felix and Mira, winner of the Canada Goose Award for Best Canadian Feature at the Toronto International Film Festival. A wealthy couple seeks to secretly adopt the unborn child of an impoverished and troubled rural teenager in Albert Shin's compelling drama, In Her Place. Here with us tonight are director Albert Shin and producer Igor Dorlyachka. <laughs> Julianne Moore won Best Actress in Cannes this year for her role alongside John Cusack, Mia Wasikowska, Sarah Gadden, and Robert Pattinson in, D in David Cronenberg's Wicked Social Satire and Vision of Tinseltown, Maps to the Stars. Here with us tonight is producer Martin Cates. A single mom struggles to raise her explosive 15-year-old son in Xavier Dolan's Mummy. This powerful film shared the jury prize at the Festival de Cannes and is Canada's foreign language Oscar submission. And a little fun fact, both Mommy and Maps to the Stars were included on Cahiers du Cinema's top 10 films of 2014 list. Congratulations to them. Sterla Gunnarsson journeyed to India to create the stunningly shot Monsoon, a meditation on the phenomenon that some call the soul of India. Here with us tonight is producer Ina Fitchman. <laughs> Harold Crooks blows the lid off the dirty world of corporate malfeasance with The Price We Pay, an incendiary documentary about the dark history and dire present-day reality of big business tax avoidance. Here with us tonight is director Harold Crooks. The suspicious death of Anuk actor and musician Solomon Tatasiak Uyarashuk, I had to do it phonetically, and the alarming youth suicide rate in the Arctic community are investigated in Saul, a stirring documentary from Marie Helene Kozino and Susan Avengak. Stéphane Lafleur brings his trademark absurdist sensibility to the tale of a recent university grad lounging in dreamy, directionless ennui during a long, hot, sleepless summer in Tudor Nicole. Here with us tonight is directing, director Stéphane Lafleur. And a young Norwegian woman recalls the five people who love her most in Violent, the stunning feature debut of musician and filmmaker Andrew Hutzelak. Violent is the winner of two prizes at the Vancouver International Film Festival. And here with us tonight is director Andrew Hutzelak. There you have it, folks, your list of Canada's top 10 features for 2014. Congratulations to all the filmmakers who are here with us tonight and who I'm sure are watching wherever they are. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. It's a great night, and I love this event. I will now turn things over to Cameron Bailey for some additional Canada's top 10 announcements, and we will see you all in 2015, January. Thank you, Terry. Uh, please join me in uh, thanking once again the magnificent Terry Hart for joining us this evening. <laughs> well, there you have it. These are your Canada's top 10 films of 2014. We hope to see you all here from January 2nd to January 11th. And as Steve said, please take it easy on January 1st and December 31st so that you're fresh for the uh, launch of Canada's top 10. Uh, we'll have many of the filmmakers and actors uh, making appearances to introduce films and participate in audience Q&A, so please come for that. Also, as a kind of a national service, I will like to uh, let everybody know that Tiff Bell Lightbox Cinemas are now licensed. To repeat, <laughs> our cinemas are licensed. You guys are the first, actually. So before you sit down to enjoy some Canadian creativity, you can set yourself up with the perfect pairing. Please enjoy responsibly. It's the Canadian thing to do. Um, one other thing. We've got these cool things. These are uh, Canada's top 10 mittens. 
I will now put them on just to display them for you. They're available, or they will be available in our tip shop. And, you know, Pierre Trudeau once said, I think it was, was it Pierre Trudeau or Pierre Burton who said that the definition of a Canadian is that you can make love in a canoe? Was that Pierre Burton? Trudeau. Which one? Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Somebody wins the quiz. I think we'll find out that the real definition of a Canadian is being able to drink cocktails with mittens on. So look forward to that at top ten. We do have some other announcements to make. In addition to these incredible 30 films, we've got some exciting Canada's top 10 events coming up. Uh, top 10 really is about celebrating Canadian cinema, past, present, and future. This year, we present a Canadian open vault screening of Bonnie Cher Klein's landmark 1980s documentary, Not a Love Story, a film about pornography. This screening is free, and it's presented in conjunction with the release of a University of Toronto Press TIFF monograph written by Rebecca Sullivan. On January 10th, we welcome Canadian author and activist Naomi Klein and filmmaker Avi Lewis for a discussion on bringing their ideas to the big screen, including the take and the shock doctrine. Audiences will also get the first sneak peek at Lewis's new documentary inspired by Klein's new book, This Changes Everything, Capitalism versus the Climate. And on January 11th, we welcome Canadian icon, prolific actor, producer, dog star member, and former Torontonian, Scarborough boy actually, Keanu Reeves, to discuss his storied career. And as Steve mentioned, the Canada's Top 10 Film Festival will hit the road uh, to cities across Canada. On January 18th, Vancouver's The Cinematheque will host a very special onstage conversation with Sandra O. Oh the brilliant indie film actor, award-winning television star, and proud Canadian. She's from Ottawa. Filmmaker Anne-Marie Fleming will join Sandra and me on stage to talk about her collaboration with O on the upcoming animated feature film, Window Horses, which is pursuing a crowdsourced uh, model to get the, the movie made. And that conversation will be presented by RBC. In January, we also have a full day of industry programming and a higher learning panel on the rules of engagement, documentary filmmaking in Canada, which will feature some of uh, our Canada's top 10 filmmakers. And finally, we're throwing a cocktail party to celebrate Canada's top 10 as well as the anniversary of Film Circuit. For 20 years, TIFF's successful film outreach program has been bringing the best of Canadian and international film and artists to communities all across the country. So mark your calendars because on January 7th, the Canada Cocktail Party will be here right at TIFF Bell Lightbox. That'll be a fun-filled night of food, drinks. We'll have a musical performance by We Are The City, which is the band connected with the film Violent, and an art installation by Shane Amon and Seth Scrivener. Scriver. Last year, they brought us, you may recall this, gigantic yellow underpants. <coughs> Think about it. <laughs> I can't wait to see what they have in store for us this year. So thanks to everyone for coming out. I'm really proud of this, uh, this lineup of 30 films, uh, student shorts, uh, short films, and Canadian features spanning coast to coast to coast. Not only that, but also going to Norway, to Hollywood, to India. Um, it's a remarkable lineup of films. I hope you'll be here to uh, take part in it, in the films and the conversations. Um, and we will uh, watch a brief trailer celebrating Canada, Canada's top 10. And then after that, I hope you'll join us outside for a cocktail to toast the year in Canadian cinema. Thanks very much. <laughs>